welcome to you are more than welcome to correct me. So Sino Vuyo is a 23 year old young black woman hailing from Stark Strait Eastern Cape, who is strongly passionate about entrepreneurship, education and law. She is the founder and managing director of Step by Step Tutors Private Limited, an educational solutions company that provides accessible, quality and impactful academic assistance to primary and high school learners. She is also the co-founder of Mila Mapudu, a woman empowerment non-profit initiative aimed at empowering adolescent girls and young women. She holds a Bachelor of Commerce majoring in law from the University of Witzfatisran, where she is now pursuing a Bachelor of Law degree. Throughout her years as a university student, Sunovuyo has served in various capacities. She was elected as the Student Development Officer of Sunnyside Hall of Residence and served as the Vice Chairperson of the Business Women's Association, but student chapter. She identifies herself as an impact-driven entrepreneur and is an Alan Gray Orbis Foundation candidate fellow. She envisions herself building a state-of-the-art school that provides quality, innovative education to learners, equipping them to be impact-driven change makers. She further envisions herself spreading her wings by building, scaling, and leading multiple businesses in various areas of interest. Sure, just reading this bio has given me goosebumps. So without any further ado, let's welcome our speaker, Sunobuyo. Please grace us with your presence. Hello, everyone. Good morning, great leaders. Um, am I audible? Yes, you're too loud and clear. Okay, great. Perfect. Thank you so much for the warm welcome and the introduction, Nabia. And thank you so much to the Girl Leader team for inviting me to speak to uh, the Girl Leaders. It is such an honor and it's something that I do not take lightly. It's an opportunity I certainly do not take lightly to be able to address young, passionate female leaders who are committed to making a change of some sort in society in their various areas of interest um, and just changing the face of what leadership looks like from one that has been male dominated for such a long time to one that has an excellent representation of competent, passionate female leaders. It is truly an honor that I do not take lightly. Um, so today I have been asked to speak on the topic of resilient leadership. And when I received that topic, I found it fitting because my own experience and my own journey has been riddled with experiences that have required me to exercise that resilience muscle, to grow it um, and to develop it really. Because as you'll see during the talk that I give, uh, really resilience and challenges have been part and parcel of my experience. Um, but before I even delve into the talk, I wanted to just speak about my understanding of what resilience is and what resilience has meant to me. And to be quite frank, resilience to me has been the ability to overcome challenges, the ability to grow, to adapt in the face of adversity, and not only the ability to just bounce back, but to bounce back better and to thrive. And with, the, with that as a backdrop, really, I think of the most recent, in fact, not the most recent, um, because really, as I said, challenges are something that I face so, so, so frequently, but the most recent significant challenge that I faced in my own journey as an entrepreneur, and I think I'll refer to myself as an entrepreneur more than I do as a leader, but we know that entrepreneurship is really an incident of leadership. But as an entrepreneur, um, at the beginning of the year, as the founder of Step by Step Tutors, which was already mentioned, we had uh, quite a challenge on the day. So we have an edgy center that we run in Stacksbridge in, in, in the Eastern Cape, which is where we give um, daily academic assistance to grade one to nine learners. And it was in February, the beginning of February, I believe it was the 6th of February, when we're supposed to open for classes for the year, right? Um, initially, obviously, when you're planning, you're planning the venues, the venue we, use, we were using last year wasn't working. So we decided to look for another venue. And luckily, 
or so we thought we had found one from one of the local departments, um, divisions in Stack Spread, who were willing to give us a venue for free. And we were really excited for that. So we thought, you know, one less problem to worry about. Now, on the day when we were supposed to be opening at one, our classes start at one. So around one, we were supposed to be opening, in fact, before one, probably around nine in the morning. We'll obviously go to the venue um, to set up and get ready. And we were told on that very morning that, unfortunately, the venue is no longer available for us to use. Now, this places me as in a predicament as someone who is meant to be leading this organization, because at one, we're expecting children to arrive who have enrolled and to receive our services. However, now we're being told a few hours before that time that, unfortunately, we do not have a venue. What are we possibly going to do? Um, I think I'll reserve what we actually did to the very last part of the talk, um, just for the added dramatic effect. Um, but it's against this backdrop that I want to speak about the lessons that I've personally learned on resilience and resilient leadership. Now, the first part that I want to delve into is the importance of resilience in leadership, right? And I have found through my personal experience that one, it is inevitable that every leader, every organization is going to face a challenging time. It is going to face a challenge or they are going to face a challenge, right? Or adversity. And this is because we live in a world that has often been described as the VUCA world. So it's a world that is volatile, it is uncertain, it is challenging or complex and ambiguous. So definitely as part of, or as someone who identifies as a leader, whether you're doing it within an organization, a big organization, a small organization, or you're leading individually without a team, you are bound to experience a challenge. That is just the nature of the game, really. It's almost as good as a law of nature, because when you assign, it's kind of like an invisible term in the invisible contract that you sign when you say you're a leader or you take up the role of becoming a leader that you are going to face challenging times you cannot run away from it right and what has become very important during those challenging times is resilience because the only way you can get through the challenging times that are inevitable is to exhibit resilience and it is then that your quality of leadership is tested. Your quality as a leader is not tested during the times when everything is going according to the year plan that you set at the beginning of the year or is going according to every single thing that you envisioned would happen. That is quite frankly, yes, that, that, that is a great time. You, you, you're still a leader nonetheless in those times. But the quality of leadership I've found has been truly tested or becomes truly tested when you're faced with challenges, when everything is not going your way, where when you're trying to fix this, on the other hand, there's something else that happens to be falling apart. When you're fixing that, everything is just falling apart simultaneously, as in the words of Chinua Achebe, when things are falling apart, that is when I found that the true quality of your leadership is tested. And now a resilient leader is someone who's going to rise to the challenge, as someone who's going to acknowledge and understand that there is indeed a challenge and rise to the occasion of facing that challenge and overcoming that challenge, right? And two, I have found that resilience is important as a leader because as a leader during these times of hardship, that is when you as a leader are tasked with the duty of inspiring hope and confidence in your team, right? So for example, where you're working with a group of people, right? When things fall apart, people look to you. It is how you react to the challenge that will determine the team morale of the people you're working with. So if in the face of a challenge, you come in and say, oh my goodness, I give up. I do not know what to do, which I mean, Obviously, sometimes you do not know what to do, and that's an opportunity for you to bring in other people, to bring in your team, to talk to your team, to see what you're going to do. But even in that predicament, you are supposed to inspire hope in your team. People are looking to you for an answer. People are looking to you for hope, for confidence, to have faith. So it's very important that as a leader, you're resilient because that's, it's your resilience that's going to drive the direction of the team going forward. How do you, what are you, what is your attitude? What is your reaction to the challenge that is being faced, right? And, you know, Noluvo mentioned how she was feeling unwell or she was feeling down um, 
at the beginning of the session, right, which I found so fitting for this particular session, because in as much as a leader, you know, in, a, in my leadership capacity, I consider myself to be resilient. But I'm so grateful for the opportunity to know that in my personal life, I don't necessarily have to always exhibit or be as quick to bounce back as one is expected to be in their leadership capacity or in their entrepreneurship capacity. So I, I, I want to note that in as much as you're expected as a leader to show up in a resilient way as a leader, that does not mean that personally you don't have the leeway to first go and cry about it. My friends will know, um, my friends really, my family will know that once I am faced with a challenge, oftentimes actually when I'm faced with a challenge entrepreneurially and in my leadership journey, the first thing I will do is cry. I will go to the people closest to me and I will break down like, oh my goodness, I don't know what I'm going to do. This is a mess. Things are falling apart. What do I fix? Who do I call? Who do I talk to? How do I fix this mess, right? But after that, that is when I, that is where really I get the strength to be able to show up as a resilient leader. First, not just it's not a matter of me just seeing a challenge and then deciding, oh my goodness, I'm going to be resilient. I'm going to overcome this challenge. I'm going to overcome adversity. First, yes, I'll do that. But first, I need to cry. I need to vent. And I'm so, so grateful for community that allows me to be able to be vulnerable before I show up as being resilient as a leader. Um, now, with that being said, uh, oftentimes, you know, when you're speaking about such topics on characteristics that you need to have as a, as a leader, um, the question then is, how do you become a resilient leader? How, okay, it's all good and well, we've heard your story, we've heard your journey, but how exactly do you become a resilient leader? And it's, Unfortunate, I suppose, but both fortunate for your resilience and character building um, experience that unfortunately you cannot learn to be resilient and you cannot become a resilient leader without challenge. It's unfortunate you cannot develop that muscle, you cannot develop that skill of being resilient outside of a challenge. But then the challenge then, or rather the opportunity to build resilience comes in at the point where you change your attitude towards the challenges that are presented. So instead of just, in fact, after crying about the challenge, you step up to it and you decide that, okay, this is not just a challenge, but it is also an opportunity for me to build character. And I will say this, I, I think this is important to add that you cannot be resilient if you're not committed to something. Essentially, resilience is your commitment to a cause, your commitment to doing something, your commitment to making things work. So outside, in the absence of commitment to something, when you're faced with a challenge, your instinct is going to be giving up and you're going to follow that instinct because you weren't really committed. And sometimes it happens that people will commit to a cause or seem to commit to a cause or choose a cause to commit to only because that's what's popular to do at that time like a lot of people are doing this for example and this is just an example you know there was a time when I mean even now which is a very necessary cause where people would do pad drives you know do this do that and if you're not really committed to it and you're just doing it because that's what everyone who's in women empowerment does they distribute pads you know and I, again I, I really don't say this to me that that is not an important cause but if you're doing something just because everyone else is doing it and you're not truly committed to the cause then in the face of challenges you're going to back down so to be able to build and become resilient you need to commit to a certain thing you need to commit to a cause because it is then when you're faced with challenges where you're able to say you know what I'm faced with a challenge. It's hard. It's challenging. I don't know how I'll make it through. But because I'm so committed to this cause, I'm so committed to this organization, I'm so committed to what I am building and what we're building as a team, this challenge is something that I'm committed to overcome just because of how much I'm committed to this cause. Because outside of that, really, when you're faced with a challenge, you will say, you know what? This is not what I signed up for. It's okay. I was doing this. I think I've done my, my fair share of good. I can end it here. This challenge is too big for me. But when you commit to a cause, you're going to cry, as I mentioned. You're going to cry. You're going to be challenged. You're going to be flabbergasted by 
how insane and how much things are falling apart. But after that, you're going to remind yourself of the cause that you committed to that requires you to step up to the challenge and embrace resilience and exhibit resilience and step up to the challenge. And with that being said, uh, I think I want to end off before we take questions and we delve into particular perhaps aspects of what we're talking about today. Um, I am a Christian and I know a girl leader says who you are is how you lead. And it would be a mess of me and it would not be true to myself to not include this, this, this element, which I found from, you know, the Bible, uh, which was really for me inspiring and always encourages me in the face of tribulation. And it's Romans 5, verse 3 to 5, and it reads as follows verbatim. We also glory in tribulations, knowing that tribulation produces perseverance and perseverance produces character and character produces hope. So even in the face of challenge, and that's what I was speaking about when I say, yes, challenges are hard, but our attitude towards them determines whether a challenge is going to knock us down or it's going to be an opportunity for us to build resilience and to build character. So yes, after you cry, remember that, that yes, and as much as this is hard, this is an opportunity for me to build character. And from character, that is where I gain hope. I hope that this has been an informative, um, to any degree, really, whether it touches one or all. I hope that what I have shared when it comes to my journey or lessons on resilient leadership is something that speaks to someone. And of, of course, I had mentioned that I will speak as uh, the final um, the, the end or the conclusion of this, this talk is how we ended up um, fixing the problem or the challenge that we had. As you remember, I spoke about how we didn't have a venue. We had a few hours left. And there, after crying, after sitting down, with, I remember I was with my mother on the day, just telling her how confused I am. I don't know what to do. In that instance, we had to go to different schools to see whether they could accommodate us at least for a temporary period until we find an actual actual place that we can get because I know that that is initially that is ultimately our goal I mean to be integrated into the schools and have the program running at schools however we hadn't proposed that as of yet but we had to go to different schools knock on different doors got a lot of no's um got a lot of no's obviously it's short notice etc however I ended up walking into an organization called Stack Spread Community Arts Center and when we got there the lady was delighted she was delighted she said, thank you for coming to us for this. We're more than willing to accommodate you and the children who are enrolled to the program. Please come in. You can start as soon as now. You don't have to pay anything. Just get your own chairs. Now, obviously, you have to find chairs that you're going to use for like 20 learners and tutors. Um, but it ended, it, did, it didn't end in tears, it ended well, because I persevered, because the team persevered, and we were able to overcome that challenge in that way, through community, through coming together and um, coming up with different solutions, creative solutions to this complex problem that we didn't imagine we'd be facing in that time. So that is how that story ends, and I hope that your story of um, adversity and challenge challenges ends in the same way of overcoming, of finding a solution and of thriving. Thank you so, so, so much. Thank you so much. That was so inspiring to listen to simply because um, like, like you said, as leaders, um, you're going to find a challenge in your life some way or the other. And sometimes it takes, and like you said, in your personal life, it takes a long time maybe, or it can, you can allow for it to take a long time to get back onto your feet from your setback. But as a leader and an entrepreneur,